things in, in a good place and it never leaves, right? So I, I have a picture of now even when she was in school here, which I've had forever. And I put my tassel on the picture and she stayed there every time. 40, 45 years later, 47, actually. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Yeah, come on, this is happy. Ha good afternoon, everybody. Hi. Best day of your life. You're going to remember it forever. So please st remain standing for the invocation to be offered by Rabbi Peter Hyman, the spiritual leader of Temple B'nai Israel in Easton. Rabbi Hyman has been a close friend of the college for many years, and in fact, this past semester, he taught a course, What is Torah for our Department of Philosophy and Religion? Following the invocation, please remain standing for the national anthem to be sung by members of Wacapella.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, ruling spirit of the universe, who grants us life, who has sustained us, and has allowed us to reach this day of accomplishment and fulfillment. You, O God, have given us the law and instilled in our hearts a desire for justice tempered by mercy. In pursuit of knowledge and wisdom, these graduates have labored and come now to the culmination of their studies at Washington College. They stand at the threshold of the rest of their lives. We ask your continued guidance and support as they step out into this challenging world. We gather this day to celebrate and give thanks. Thanks for the gift of life and the privilege of learning. Thanks for friends and family who have offered support, strength, and encouragement to those who now graduate and step into the future of a limitless possibility. We offer heartfelt gratitude for this superb institution of higher learning, Washington College, for the faculty and staff, for their instruction, their mentoring, their guidance, and their unwavering dedication to you, their students. We are grateful for their testimony and example. Almighty God, most of all, on this day of accomplishment and success, we give thanks for these, our graduates. We are grateful for their enthusiasm, their talents and abilities, divine gifts which they now carry out into the world. Grant that in a world of division, they may be agents of reconciliation, that in a world of conflict, they will be agents of peace, that in a world of injustice, they be agents for justice, and that in a world of unfairness, they will model righteousness. We pray, O oh God, most gracious and merciful, that the friendships that they have created at this institution of higher learning remain true and firm across the miles and years, and let the lessons they learned and the wisdom they have gained here at Washington College not fade. Bless them as they go forth. Ennoble them, strengthen them, give them harmony and peace, and let each of them dwell beneath their vine and their fig tree, and may none be afraid. Amen. Please be seated. Okay, before I start the formal program, I wonder if I could ask the graduates to do something. I want you to stand up. I want you to turn around to wherever your parents and relatives are, are sitting or standing. 
I want you to give them a big thank you round of applause. Thank you very much. <laughs> Got some fans back there. To family and friends, faculty and staff, honored guests, and most especially the graduating seniors, welcome to Washington College's commencement celebration for the class of 2019. Let me begin this ceremony by first saying how proud I am and we are of all you have been here. You have struck me time and time again by your generosity, your caring for your fellow students, for the community, and for the fate of our planet. Through your academic studies, co-curricular activities, and internships, as well as myriad service projects, you have tackled problems of hunger, disease, economic disparity, refugee displacement, habitat loss, and environmental degradation. You have considered how history informs our future, what moves our global economy, and the ethical dilemmas of our time. Your moral compass points due north. You, my young friends, are ready, and believe me, the world needs you now more than ever. Washington College has given you the foundation to build a meaningful life. Your liberal arts education will serve you well, no matter where your life takes you. So really, congratulations on a job well done. Now in keeping, now in keeping with a time-honored tradition here at the college, I'm very pleased to introduce our senior class speaker, Nicholas L. Roberti. Nicholas is a political science major, an economics minor, a baseball player, and received honors on his thesis on Justice Anthony Kennedy's 14th Amendment on Jurisprudence. He's a member of Phi Beta Kappa and a student fellow in the Institute of Religion, Politics, and Culture. Come this fall, he has been admitted and will be attending the University of Virginia Law School. So let's welcome Nicholas. Good morning to the Board of Visitors and Governors, honored guests, faculty and staff, alumni, family and friends, and most importantly, good morning to the Washington College graduating class of 2019. I'll begin my speech by quoting from the namesake of our college and his farewell address to our nation. The President, speaking as a parting friend to our nation's government, provided these guiding words. Promote then as an object of primary importance institutions for the general diffusion of knowledge. In proportion, as the structure of a government gives force to public opinion, it is essential that the public opinion be enlightened. In an era in which, some might say, our public opinion is not always enlightened, it may seem fair to say that President Washington's parting words have been disregarded. But, if one were to look no further than the politics of today to diagnose the futility of Washington's advice, they would be doing a grave injustice to the hundreds of Washington College graduates sitting before you now. These graduates have lived up to Washington's advice. They understand that to go out and change the world, they must first be educated in the varying subjects. After all, that's exactly what a, a liberal arts degree from Washington College does, and that's why the young women and men before you now have earned the capacity to go out and change the world in their respective fields. In fact, we already have people serving as political leaders, such as Maya Nguyen and Victoria Klein. We have people already in looking to influence the medical community to find better outcomes for patients, such as Mackenzie Bozak and Cam Watson. 
In this crowd, we have people looking to significantly improve our environment, such as Larissa Prezioso and her studies into plastic waste. My own two roommates, Luke Distillo and Dom Giandonato, just spent so many long months tirelessly researching specific areas for their theses, which they will now use to catapult themselves into graduate schools and job opportunities. I can assure you, through my four years, I've been inspired by many people in this crowd because of their enthusiasm to begin to change our society for the better. If I were to list them all, we'd be here for quite some time. So I instead invite you all in the audience to ask your graduate what they'll be doing. I am more than certain you'll be inspired by their answer. These outstanding leaders before you now have earned the capacity to achieve that overall mission, to change the world and to leave this place better than when we found it, as a wise woman once told me. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention some of the people that have impacted my educational experience to achieve that overall mission. My father, mother, and brothers, and the rest of my family who have been with me throughout absolutely everything, I thank you for your endless love and support. To all the wonderful peers I met here, including my girlfriend, teammates, and friends, I thank you for making this place so deeply special to me. And a special thanks to all my professors, coaches, and mentors here at this school and beyond. You've all sacrificed so much of your own time to develop me as a young man, and I would not be here without you today. I encourage my fellow graduates to continue living up to Washington's advice and retain the title of student beyond the halls of Washington College to be lifelong learners. Always question and never be satisfied with the status quo. In an era in which our public opinion may not, to be, uh, may not appear to be as informed as Washington would have wanted, these graduating seniors refuse to be the ones to nod along and go with the flow. We choose not to fit in, but instead to lead, change, and innovate. From this beautiful Eastern Shore Sanctuary, we will depart and begin to challenge the masses to lead forward, to ask the tough questions in our respective industries, and to engage in the everlasting struggle for good. We will now enter the real world, prepared to be better citizens, thinkers, and leaders, just as George Washington would have wanted. We've got the tools from the very college of George Washington's name. Now let's be the generation to change this world and leave it better than when we found it. Thank you and congratulations again to the class of 2019. Thank you, Nicholas. Perhaps the best measure of the quality of any educational institution is the character and accomplishments of its graduates. The Alumni Association of Washington College each year recognize a graduate or graduates who by achievement and service to the community and country has attained distinction in their chosen field. This year, the Alumni Board of Washington College has selected two recipients, Carolyn Choate Turnbull, class of 1980, and Barry Glassman, class of 1984. Patrick McMenamin, the class of 1987, and chair of our alumni board, will offer greetings and read the citations. Patrick? Thank you, President Landgraft. I'm honored to be here today representing the Washington College Alumni Association. Congratulations to the members of the Washington College Class of 2019 for all of your remarkable achievements and accomplishments over these past four years. Although I did so on Friday at your senior luncheon, let me again welcome all of you to our ever-growing and energetic alumni family. I would like to recognize all the alumni here today that have come back in support of the graduates and the college. The alumni board and the college appreciate from the bottom of our hearts the time and talents that our alumni give to the college year in and year out. I would also like to congratulate the parents who have children graduating today. It was only three years ago that I sat where you currently sit, watching my daughter graduate from Washington College. There have been very few moments in my life as fulfilling as watching her walk across the stage and be awarded her diploma. I know how proud all of you are. It is now my privilege on behalf of the Alumni Association to award the 2019 Alumni Citation for Excellence. Our first recipient is Barry T. Glassman, class of 1984, for excellence in public service. Barry, will you please join us on stage?
Barry Glassman's career in public service started right here at Washington College, where as a two-term president of the Student Government Association, a member of the College Republicans, and an intern with the Maryland General Assembly, he honed his political ideology, fiscally conservative, yet progressive on social and environmental issues. Barry, in 1990, successfully ran for a seat on the Harford County Council and never looked back. Nearly 30 years later, after a succession of political posts at the local and state levels, from the Harford County Council to the Maryland House of Delegates, the Maryland State Senate, and now a second term as Harford County Executive, some are now considering him the heir apparent to Maryland Governor Larry Hogan. <laughs> Throughout his political ascension, Barry has never forgotten his rural family roots, his connection to his alma mater, nor his civic responsibility to inspire a new generation of public leaders. In Annapolis, he has been the champion for Maryland's Selinger program, which provides grants to eligible independent colleges and universities. For students interested in following a similar path of public service, he has been an outstanding role model and mentor. He makes time to meet with students in Professor Melissa Deckman's state and local politics class and has attended student and alumni networking events in Annapolis. He has offered a number of internships to Washington College students, one of whom stayed on to manage his campaign for Harford County Executive. His motivation has always been to make a difference, to have a positive impact on his community and the people of Maryland. Whether as a volunteer firefighter, United Way volunteer, director of the Maryland Association of Counties, or on the board of the Maryland Economic Development Corporation, Barry has always put the welfare of others first. In recognition of his outstanding example of citizen leadership, Washington College is pleased to present to Barry T. Glassman, class of 1984, the Alumni Citation for Excellence in Public Service. Congratulations. I now have the pleasure of bringing to the stage our second Alumni Citation Award recipient, Carolyn R. Choate Turnbull, class of 1980, recognized for excellence in public service. Carolyn, will you please join us on the stage? This is a woman who just doesn't quit. A strong, courageous she-warrior who battled advanced breast cancer and beat it into submission. Carolyn Choate defied the odds and lived to tell the tale. Her diagnosis of estrogen-positive breast cancer, unfortunately, is not so unusual. But in her hands as a storyteller and champion for women waging similar battles, her journey from dark prognosis to triumphant survival has become the stuff of legend. The moral of the story? Strength of will and sheer tenacity can sometimes prove the doctors wrong, especially if we all band together in the fight. As a television producer raising two young daughters with her husband and working towards her master's degree in literature at the time of her diagnosis, the former English major drew upon her knowledge of medieval literature to live the epic struggle against cancer as she rewrote the heroic literary epics with her very life. Hiking solo across Santorini as Odysseus, and across Denmark as Beowulf, she physically stepped into the heroine's role in a public show of fierce determination to find a new path forward as she raised money to help women in treatment. Carolyn spread her arms wide, embracing not only underserved populations, but also the medical community. The nonprofit organization she established in 2006 assists low-income and minority women with early detection screenings and treatment. The River of Life Tribute Challenge she and her older daughter Sydney completed in 2017, a 300 mile kayak trip down the Delaware River from New Hampshire to Baltimore's Inner Harbor raised nearly $50,000 for the University of Maryland. That was Carolyn's way to honor UM's pioneering medical researcher, Angela Brody, who developed a new class of drugs, 
aromatase inhibitors that have saved millions of women's lives, including Carolyn's, from the recurrence and certain death. Of her many accomplishments, Carolyn's deepest honor is that of motherhood. She is proud that her young daughter, Mackenzie Choate Turnbull, graduated from Washington College in 2015. Through her own example and her public advocacy, Carolyn is saving lives. It is with great joy and admiration that we present to Carolyn Choate Turnbull, class of 1980, the Alumni Citation for Excellence in Public Service. Congratulations. So that human courage is impressive, and I did tell Barry when he becomes governor, don't forget us. <laughs> the checks will always be cashed. So thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Barry and Carolyn. Thank you very much. So it's a tradition at commencement for Washington College to celebrate people of extraordinary merit. We are so honored to have with us today Chief Justice Leo E. Strine, a truly brilliant man who is considered one of the most influential behind the scenes figures in American business. For those of us who have known him for more than 30 years, like I have, it's not always behind the scenes. It is my privilege now to introduce the chair of our Board of Visitors and Governors here at Washington College, a Washington College alumnus, Stephen Golding, a member of the class of 1972. Steve has just recently stepped down as Senior Vice President for Strategic Initiatives and CEO of Ohio University of Dublin campus. Prior to entering educational financial management 25 years ago, Steve was Secretary of Finance and Budget Director for the State of Delaware. Please join me in welcoming our Chair, Mr. Stephen Golding, who will deliver greetings from the Board of Visitors and Governors and read the mandamus for the College Honors. Steve? Thank you, Kurt. Uh, it is my uh, pleasure to welcome everybody here uh, and to uh, offer you uh, greetings and uh, uh, best wishes from the Board of Visitors and Governors, uh, who um, uh, enjoys very much the opportunity every time they're on campus uh, to meet uh, the students and to engage them in conversations. We, we actually gain great energy and, and uh, um, in new insights uh, every time we have the opportunities to engage uh, with the wonderful students we have here at Washington College. Uh, and I just want to uh, make sure you understand how proud we are of you and we offer you our, your, our best wishes as you go off uh, into your new careers. Uh, it is now my uh, privilege to read the mandamus for the college honors. Uh, it having been certified by the honors and award committee to the visitors and governors of Washington College that Leo E. Strine Jr. is of acknowledged eminence and distinction, has made worthwhile and noteworthy contributions to our society, and is therefore worthy to receive the highest honors. You are hereby authorized and directed in accordance with the ordinance to that effect to confer at the public commencement on May 19, 2019 to Leo E. Strine Jr. honoris causa the degree of doctors of law. Thank you, Steve. Washington College has conferred the honorary degree since 1785. On June 24, 1789, the college bestowed upon President George Washington the first honorary degree awarded to a sitting president of the United States. This degree, Doctor of Laws, 
reflected the deep respect and gratitude the college held and still holds for its namesake and founding benefactor. In 1782, a letter written to then General Washington, Dr. William Smith, the college's founding president, described the newly chartered institution as a seminary of universal learning expressly dedicated to your name with a view of instructing and animating the youth and many future generations to admire and to imitate these public virtues and patriotic labors. These have created a private monument to you in the heart of every good citizen. Washington College gave, uh, excuse me, General Washington gave 50 guineas, which I'm told is with inflation now worth $10 million to this college, paid a visit to the campus in 1784, and served on our Board of Visitors and Governors until his inauguration as the nation's first president. Today, we present the honorary degree to another outstanding individual. Delaware's leading jurist and one of the top lawyers and judges in the country, Leo E. Strine, will you join me at the lectern? Americans may choose to live anywhere they please, but when it comes to doing business, the majority of Americans' Fortune 500 companies flock to the small state of Delaware. Business leaders are attracted by the best qualified corporate law experts in the country and a prized judicial process that resolves complex legal disputes with precision and speed. And the standard bearer for judicial excellence in Delaware is Leo Strine, a corporate litigator, counsel to the governor of Delaware, an esteemed judge on the Delaware Court of Chancery, and who now serves as Chief Justice of Delaware's highest court. Because of Delaware's judicial reputation, students at every law school in the country study the Delaware Corporation Statute and decisions of the Delaware courts interpreting law. And for the same reason, Leo Strine is a corporate law celebrity. He's the ultimate arbitrator of the law that governs most US corporations, He's renowned for his great intellect, his mastery of the law, as well as his robust vocabulary. You know, but that's a nice way of saying, right, Judge? <laughs> Strine doesn't suffer fools, nor corporate insiders who take advantage of outsiders. He has written dozens of articles on business law topics that have appeared in high profile law reviews. And he has lectured widely on topics such as mergers and acquisitions, the role of independent directors, valuation, corporate law theories, and globalization. When Leo Strine speaks, the world listens. According to the New York Times, his opinions are considered among the most influential in corporate law. Chief Justice Strine has carried the force of law with a bomb. As counsel to Delaware Governor Thomas Carper, he helped draft a $200 million settlement, Delaware versus New York, that brought unclaimed dividend and interest payments on securities back to Delaware. But you know, he also drafted a welfare reform plan, reform plan called a better chance that empowered clients to find work and meet specified parenting responsibilities. He also drafted the governor's effort to secure passage of the state's standards-based 
educational accountability, charter school, and public school choice legislation. As Chief Justice Strine has emphasized the need to address persistent racial inequality and to provide a more equitable access to justice for all Delawareans, regardless of their wealth or position. Among his many decisions, as Chief Justice Strine authored the decision striking down Delaware's death penalty because he believed that every defendant has a right to have their fate determined by a jury. Throughout his remarkable judicial career, Chief Justice Strine has strived to do the right thing, to hold American corporations to the highest standards, and to establish a social norm free of ethical or moral lapses. In recognition of his spirited and meaningful voice in American corporate law and his lifelong commitment to social good, Washington College bestows upon him the honorary degree of Doctor of Laws. So, <laughs> the judge, it's my great pleasure to say by virtue of the authority vested in me by the visitors and governors of Washington College and the state of Maryland, I confer upon you the honorary degree, Doctor of Laws, with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. It is now my great pleasure to invite our most recent alumnus to provide the commencement address to our graduates. Thank you, Dr. Strine. Thank you. Thank you, President Landgraf. And, and I'm honored to be up here with all the, the wonderful Washington College um, faculty who care so much about you all. And I'm particularly honored to be here on the, uh, and uh, humbled to actually get an award alongside Ms. Cho Turnbull and Mr. Glassman. They exemplify the kind of commitment to public service and the best interest of society and, and the hopes that this institution has for all of its graduates. Uh, I know, I, I can see everybody's going to say, the President Landgraf used the word celebrity. Here, but wouldn't, you, wouldn't it be cool, like at your graduation, to have a celebrity? And you get one in corporate law. <laughs> I do, I did, uh, though. Uh, my wife and I came out of a hotel in London, and there was a small group of photographers. And I said to Carrie, they must be, uh, because I was named a person to watch in Delaware Today magazine in 1996. <laughs> They must be here for me. But instead, a car stopped and a, and a guy got out and he looked like he was about 19 years old, didn't know where he was, and he had this thing with him, this, this, this other more striking person, and it was Kim Kardashian at the... Uh, and in, in truth be told, whatever, you, whatever your feelings are about the Kardashians, Carrie and Leo Strine will vouch for you. That is one fine-looking human being. <laughs> So I'm not really a fine looking human being, but I, I, I am really, it means a lot to me personally to be here because, uh, you know, our family actually knows how special this class is because our son is a sophomore here in no small part because of the members of this graduating class. There's a rather amazing person here named Pat O'Neill Dude's kind of a somewhat good student. <laughs> well, what my family will remember about him is that when James was a junior in high school, he, he came on an overnight and Coach Dunchy had him stay with Pat. And, Pat and, and Pat's father was in town and, and they actually took him to a family dinner. And from that 
first time th experience, the, the soccer team at Washington College just made our son feel like a member of a family. And that was natural to them because that is how they are. And I was tempted to actually see with the top golf kind of height advantage I have whether I could get a long throw out to BG to honor the uh, soccer team. I don't think I could match Brian, Brian's uh, arms, but I just want to say that I, don't, I think my son's experience with the soccer team is really characteristic of what you all know about this place. It's the genuine commitment to community that makes this institution unique. And Kurt already uh, said for you all to do one thing, which is to give a Goose uh, Nation shout out, right, to all your friends and family who are here. I want to say something because of the special nature of the folks behind me, the teachers. One thing you could all do today is think of a coach, a high school teacher, a middle school teacher, somebody in your family who maybe couldn't be here today, who gave you an encouraging word, and those devices that you're looking at while this guy talks to you, send one of them a text and say, hey, Mrs. Jones, I remember I had your history class in a junior, and I just graduated as a political science major, and it was really that class I had with you that pulled me on, or Coach Blank. People who give their lives to working with young people, to mentoring them, in the moment you take to do that, that you will make them feel good and appreciated for months to come, and you will reinvigorate their commitment to give, keep giving back to next generation. So if you could do that for me, I think it will mean actually more to you because of what, how you will make those people feel. Um, in the moments I have with you today, I'm actually going to talk a lot about what I think is enduringly valuable about the experience you had here. Now, I'm not going to slight the discipline specific skills you learned. A first rate liberal arts education path passes on the methods and knowledge from all strands of the humanities and lets you benefit from the accumulated wisdom of our ancestors. But what's most important about your experience here is not something specific you learned, but something more general and durable. That's the worth of opening your heart, soul, and mind to the full range of human experience and perspectives. Challenging yourselves by getting outside of yourself, confronting the uncomfortable, traveling to new worlds, and listening to beliefs and ideas new to you. Now that commitment to open-minded learning of the humanities is now under challenge. For some, the kind of depth and breadth that you got here is an irrelevant luxury which this society can't afford. Better just to focus on coding or some very specific of the moment skill for which jobs are presently available. Forget the idea of building a mind with a strong and flexible foundation, one capable of continuing to learn and master more particular skills as life goes on. Forget the idea that the concept of being an American is not just to be a worker, but to be a citizen with the right and duty to participate in the life of a Republican democracy. But another challenge to the ideal of a liberal arts education and to Republican democracy exists today. More and more our society is polarizing in a tribal way. Instead of being tolerant of other views, there's an increasing desire to create environments where differences of opinion are excluded and where no one has to confront an uncomfortable reality. Within the confines of those we see as like ourselves, we are more forgiving and tolerant of faults. But as to others that we see as different from ourselves, we're quick to condemnation and faux, or if you like English like I do, fake outrage, right? Somebody told a joke, oh, that can't possibly be funny, except when me and my friends said it last week. Now, one of the ways in which these factors have surfaced is the concept of trigger warnings. The idea that students should be told in advance if they might come across something potentially upsetting. So let me describe the kind of trigger warning that Washington College should be proud to give every student because it describes what I understand to be the education received. Here goes. During the next four years, we will introduce you to the breadth and depth of the human experience in all its aspects. This will be challenging, exciting, provocative, but often disturbing and sad. We will help you better understand our current world, 
and gain the skills and knowledge necessary for you to become a productive citizen and worker who helps humanity become more enlightened, moral, and ethical. But for that to happen, you must confront ugly realities. Works of amazing artistic beauty and intellectual importance will involve prejudices common at their time of origin. Racism, sexism, homophobia, and xenophobia permeate human history. You will encounter them in many contexts. Sadly, the human experience has been fraught with violence, oppression, and callousness, not just directed to other human beings, but to other living beings and even our physical environment. We won't sugarcoat those truths, but nor will we ignore what should be celebrated about humanity. Across cultures and across thousands of years of human culture, emerges art astonishing artistic achievement, heroic acts of compassion and empathy, and the articulation and evolution of basic principles of other regarding behavior. Along with the faults of humanity exist more optimistic and worthy developments. We will see great thinkers and ordinary people transcend the prejudices and biases of their time to expand their boundaries of human compassion and to help others do so. But because no one is perfect, we'll confront the fact that many of those who have done the most to help us tear down biases and prejudices still harbored biases and prejudices of their own. Progress does not come all at once. The namesake of this wonderful institution embodies that reality. George Washington put principle over self-interest and set the example of walking away from power where, when, there were too many, when there were many who wanted to make him king. Without his example, our Republican democracy may never have succeeded and set an example that the governed should determine who gets to rule. But at the same time, George Washington was a slaveholder his entire life. Then again, through his continuing contact with black people, he did come to recognize them as fellow human beings, to see the moral error of slavery, and he freed his slaves in his will. Now, Washington, is Washington alone in his moral ambiguity? Of course not. Many suffragettes were racist. Many abolitionists were sexist. Perhaps unsurprisingly, many advocates for pe rights for people like themselves do not see others as similarly situated. We will not seek at Washington College only to uh, identify those who are fully woke, the word of the moment, because we don't pretend to be the judge of what woke is, much less to be fully woke ourselves. And like the humans who created them, great works of art, philosophy, and literature are fraught with contradictions and bias. If we shielded you from them because of that, we would blind you to knowledge. In fact, we would have to conceal from you all of literature, all of philosophy, all of religion, and all of history, lest you be confronted with something that might now be considered unacceptable. We refuse to do that. What we will do is teach a curriculum steeped in the history of the human struggle over questions of morality and equality, and encourage you to imagine what it would have been like to address these questions in the historical context in which important thinkers and leaders actually lived. In this journey, our job is to get you out of your comfort zone, which the heat is helping to do right now. <laughs> Keep waving those things and to expose you to thoughts from people and times different from those you've experienced. If we fail to do that, we would not be respecting you as an adult. So too would we be disrespectful of you if we shielded you from any situation that you might find upsetting. That's impossible to do and to provide you with the kind of education that you deserve. But what we will strive to do is to expose you to the human experience in a caring and tolerant way. Most of all, we will seek to make sure that you go on this intellectual and also emotional journey as part of a caring community. You should be able to express your genuine reaction to the thoughts of the works you are required to read. If you find them painful, there should be an outlet for you to say so. At the same time, as a member of a community, we will expect you to understand that your fellow students and your teachers may have a different perspective from you. Striving to look at issues and human situations from the standpoint of others is something we will ask of each of you and of ourselves as teachers. We will not tolerate any acts of hate toward or subordination of any member of our community, but nor will we allow legitimate differences of opinion to be silenced through the adoption of any rigid ideology or belief system. Respect for differences 
requires just that, respect for differences in every respect that does not injure anyone else. Now that, that's the kind of trigger warning I can get behind. Why? Because it's exactly what we want a liberal arts college like Washington College to do. It's more than fair warning, it's a worthy mission statement. But if you notice, there's an embedded tension in this articulation of what an institution like Washington College seeks to achieve. One of the primary goals of the people who educated was to expose you to different ways of thinking, to introduce you to different cultures, cultures quite alien from our own and having belief systems that we might find unusual or even immoral. But the other goal is, is equally important, and that's to aid us in that most worthy end of the humanities, erasing the concept of the other that there are other fellow human beings who are so categorically different and inferior that we do not owe them the obligation to treat them as equals deserving of our respect and tolerance. The liberal arts college thus exposes students to the wide diversity of human perspectives and experience while simultaneously showing that what we all have in common far outweighs our differences. Now, this is where we get to the tribal part. When you leave here today, you are likely to find your window on the world narrowing rather than expanding. Those devices that you use every, all the time and that you, could, you can look at right now won't bother me. <laughs> they can deliver information to you about another con continent. Give it up for our international students, right? We have flags over all here of all these folks who came to this wonderful place from around the world. And you can use those devices, and you should, to keep in touch with them and to learn about where they came from. But more often, what these devices do is to keep you comfortably in an echo chamber. There are powerful commercial interests, right? Every time you do a search, you think that it's not like going to the library. It's not like using LexisNexis. When you do a search, there's going to be an, a profit-driven business who has an algorithm and it takes advantage of what it learns about you and when you do searches it takes into account your habits and your preferences and your bias and you and can actually circle your world you know make it a narrowing circle where when you search all you find is something small that reflects you Likewise, for too many of things, when we go into the world of work or we decide where to live, we can find ourselves working in less, not more diverse communities. And so these things that we do, what they can happen when you leave this wonderful place committed to inclusion and committed to shaping a diverse community, you can find yourself in a narrower, narrower world and that concept of the other can creep into your life, lives more and more. As you go forward in life, you'll decide what team you're on in the sense of things like political beliefs. What political party do I believe, uh, live in? What wing of the party am I in? Religious beliefs. Am I committed to a particular faith? Do I not believe in faith at all? And life may pick your team in terms of economic class. And what you'll find, and it's sad, but it's true, is that where you live and work will influence how much time you spend with people of different colors and cultures. With less diversity in your daily life, there'll be a corresponding tendency to lose perspective and to begin to unlearn the valuable lessons in empathy, compassion, and understanding you have spent the last four years absorbing. Absorbing these lessons not just in the classroom, but as members of a diverse community, people who have come to see each other's full humanity, regardless of race, sexual orientation, religion, or political viewpoint. Now, it's, it's vital that you take this moment in your life to ask yourself, what values are most dear to you? What principles will you hold yourself accountable for honoring in your own conduct? What lines will you not cross for personal self-interest or glory? What's more valuable to you than money or fame? What's of more lasting and genuine or worth? And then what standards do you expect to honor in terms of how you treat other people? Respecting their equal dignity, their right to different beliefs, to love who they want, to worship the God they choose, or not? 
Write a note to yourself now about who you believe you are and hold on to that moral compass for dear life. Situations will come where you are tempted to dishonor your best self, the one you truly wish to be, because that will serve your less worthy side, your desire for praise, stature, or even momentary social acceptance. None of you will pass the moral mirror test every time. That's the reality of humanity. But if you define for yourself what it means to be a good person and what that demands of you, that moral compass will keep you moving towards your true north. But there's a special part of that challenge. As you identify your principles and what you expect of yourself and other people, make this pledge to yourself, your community, your nation, and to humanity. Say this, I will not condemn other people on the basis of conduct that I excuse, forgive, or tolerate when I do it myself or when it is done by my friends and family and people I see as like me. I will apply my moral code to myself, my family, and my larger circle as strictly as I do to people I consider to be unlike me. Now, I have no intention to be political in the partisan sense today, but I will make this observation about our politics and what your generation can do to make the, our politics much better. If you believe that behavior is wrong when it's done by a member of a political party different than your own, then that behavior is wrong when it is done by members of your own party. If you believe that the conduct of someone who is a friend is your friend, say someone who got a DUI, you know anyone who got a DUI? I do. Someone who may engaged in a financial indiscretion, somebody who might have cheated on a test, and if when you look at your friend or your family member that that happened to, and you say to someone, you've got to consider that in the context of their full humanity, in the context of their full qualities as a human and the pressures they were under, then extend that same sense of empathy to others in a similar situation. Nothing is more unprincipled and immoral than the self-interested, hypocritical condemnation of others on the grounds that they've sh fallen short of the mark when you do, do not hold yourself or those you consider your friends to the same standard. Rather, what's most worthy is when we all strive to treat others with equal regard and equal respect. That means recognizing the good in people different from ourselves, tolerating those who have beliefs that we do not share, and not judging them by standards we refuse to apply to ourselves and those we view as on our team in life. The reality is what we share as fellow human beings far exceeds our differences. A community like Washington College illustrates that an understanding of human differences, beliefs, and experiences can have the seemingly paradoxical but also very real effect of making us remember what is most true. There is no other. There are just other flawed people who, like us, live in love and make mistakes and struggle. The differences we have in styles, beliefs, and strengths do not detract from our fellow humanity. They are essential to human progress and the joy we bring to each other. As you leave this special place, never forget the lessons you've learned in that. Thank you for your time and attention. Wow. So thank you, Dr. Chief Justice and all around good human being, Judge Strine. Thank you so much, that was fabulous. So what I'd like to do now is call Chair Stephen Golding up to the podium to read the mandamus for your degrees. Thank you, President Landgraf. It gives me great pleasure uh, to the president of Washington College, it having been certified by the faculty to the visitors and governors of Washington College that the following named persons have satisfied all requirements for the baccalaureate degree. You are hereby authorized and directed in accordance with the ordinance to that effect to confer at the public commencement on May 19, 2019, the degrees which they have earned. Mr. President. Okay, this is it. 
Yeah. And just think for your parents and relatives, come July, there'll be no check in the mail. Congratulations to them. So will the graduates please rise? So thank you, Chair Golding. By the authority vested in me by the visitors and governors of Washington College and the state of Maryland, I hereby confer upon you the degrees earned with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. In testimony whereof, I shall present you with your diploma when you appear before me at the platform. Please be seated. At this time, I want to call upon our chief academic officer, Provost and Dean Dr. Patrice De Quinzio to introduce the candidates. Thank you, Kurt. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. It's such a pleasure to be here and honor our class of 2019, uh, honor their accomplishments as well as the obstacles they overcame and the struggles they engaged in. Everyone has taken a different path to be here today, but they're all equally deserving of honor. It's now my privilege to recognize the graduating senior with first honors. First honors is conferred to the senior who has achieved the highest cumulative grade point average for the class of 2019. And this year I'm pleased to say we have five students who have earned first honors. <laughs> Receiving a Bachelor of Arts, Patrick Stevens O'Neill, summa cum laude, the Arthur A. Knapp th Class of 39 Memorial Prize in History, the Psychology Department Outstanding Achievement Award, Departmental Honors in History, Departmental Honors in Psychology. Danny Chow, summa cum laude, the Economics Department Award, the Departmental Honors in Business Management Award. <laughs> Hannah Claire Wampler, summa cum laude, the Emil J. Hillenbrand Memorial Medal, Departmental Honors in English. <laughs> Lori Maria Juliet Wysong, summa cum laude. The Arthur A. Knapp Class of 39 Memorial Prize in History, Departmental Honors in History. <laughs> Receiving a Bachelor of Science, Julia Marie Portman, summa cum laude, the Department of Biology Award of Special Recognition, the Middendorf Award for Academic Excellence in the Study of the Environment, Departmental Honors in Biology. <laughs> Will the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts please come forward? Connor Nicole Bailey, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors in Psychology. Erin 
Margaret Kane, summa cum laude, the Emil J.C. Hillenbrand Memorial Medal, the Bennett Lamont Senior Capstone Award in English, Departmental Honors in English. Simon Carl Cheknoff, summa cum laude. Victoria Marie Klein, summa cum laude. The Emil J.C. Hildenbrand Memorial Award, the Jonathan A. Taylor Jr. Leadership Award, Departmental Honors in English, Departmental Honors in Political Science. Marin I. Corisaniti, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors in History. Carolyn Marie Cox, summa cum laude, the William Gover Duval Class of 1930 Prize, Departmental Honors in Computer Science, Departmental Honors in Mathematics. <laughs> Hannah Amelia Catherine Foster, summa cum laude, the Anthropology Award, the Simon Holtman Award, Departmental Honors in Anthropology, Departmental Honors in International Studies. <laughs> Kelly Mar Gardner, summa cum laude. <clears throat> Kelsey Nicole McNall, summa cum laude. The Environmental Science and Studies Award, the Margaret Horsley Award, Departmental Honors in Environmental Studies, Departmental Honors in Sociology. <laughs> Mu Sing Ying, summa cum laude, the Economics Department Award. Shannon Neal, summa cum laude, Department, Departmental Honors in English. <laughs> Kyle Sharpless Pitts, summa cum laude, the International Studies Award, the Erica and Henry Salick Prize, Departmental Honors in French Studies, Departmental Honors in International Studies. Nicholas Louis Roberti, summa cum laude, the Political Science Award, Departmental Honors in Political Science. <laughs> Rachel Catherine Treglia, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors in Theater. Samantha Ioana Trickeriotis, summa cum laude, the Psychology Department Outstanding Achievement Award, Departmental Honors in Psychology. <laughs> Allison Christina Strireski, summa cum laude, the Outstanding Dance Minor Award, the Sean O'Connor Teaching Award, Departmental Honors in Human Development. Matthew Hennessy Arthur, magna cum laude, Departmental Honors in Psychology. <laughs> Simran Bajaj, magna cum laude. <laughs> Matthew Bernero, magna cum laude, Departmental Honors in Computer Science. <laughs> Alana Carter, magna cum laude. <laughs> Ashley. 
Alexandra Ioni Clark, magna cum laude, the Psychology Department Award, Departmental Honors in Psychology. Courtney Colbert, magna cum laude, Departmental Honors in Computer Science, Departmental Honors in Mathematics. <laughs> Abigail Aileen Canal, magna cum laude, Departmental Honors in French Studies, Departmental Honors in Human Development. <laughs> Jessica Lee Cornwell, Magna cum laude. <laughs> Jessica Dixon, magna cum laude. Departmental Honors in Computer Science, Departmental Honors in Mathematics. <laughs> Caitlin Marie Donovan, magna cum laude. The Margaret Horsley Award. Clarice Martine Gardner, magna cum laude, the Erica and Henry Salek Prize, the German Studies Alumni Award, Departmental Honors in German Studies, Departmental Honors in International Studies. <laughs> Katie Alexis Heinold, magna cum laude. Emma Caroline Hoy, magna cum laude. The Alpha Chi Omega Music Award, Departmental Honors in English, Departmental Honors in Music. <laughs> Matthew Hutton, magna cum laude. Departmental Honors in Business Management. Alex John Kincaid, magna cum laude, the Department of Philosophy and Religion Award. <laughs> Christy Lynn Kozlowski, magna cum laude, Departmental Honors in Business Management. Alexis Mackenzie Kraling, magna cum laude, Departmental Honors in Business Management. <laughs> Barbara Marie McGuigan, magna cum laude, the Anthropology Service Award. <laughs> Kellen Elizabeth McCluskey, magna cum laude, Departmental Honors in Psychology. <laughs> Catherine Joyce McMillan, magna cum laude, the Stanley A. Shotland Business Leadership Award, Departmental Honors in Business Management. <laughs> Kenneth Thomas Ritter III, magna cum laude, the Department of Business Management Senior Capstone Experience Award, the Departmental Honors in Business Management. <laughs> Lindsay Christine Russell, magna cum laude. <laughs> Madison Lee Shank, magna cum laude, the Art History Award, the Norman Jean Humanities Awards for Excellence, the Departmental Honors in Humanities. <laughs> Rihanna Lynn Sherman, magna cum laude, the Gary E. Clark Performance Prize, Departmental Honors in Music. 
Emma Jordan Silber, magna cum laude, Departmental Honors in Business Management. Faith Marie Stahl, magna cum laude, Departmental Honors in History. Rachel Lynn Terry, magna cum laude, Departmental Honors in Human Development. Rachel Maria Walaga, magna cum laude, the Erica and Henry Salick Prize, Departmental Honors in Hispanic Studies. Tianchi Shea, magna cum laude, the Department of Business Management Award, Departmental Honors in Business Management. <laughs> Tiana Catherine Baker, cum laude, the Dr. Davy H. McCall Prize in Economics. Madeline Amelia Bennett, cum laude, Departmental Honors in Hispanic Studies. Mark Stephen Blumberg, cum laude, Departmental Honors in Business Management. Emily Booth, cum laude. <laughs> Nicole Hunter DeWitt, cum laude. The Lambda Alpha Gamma, Gamma of Maryland Chapter Senior Award, Departmental Honors in Anthropology. <laughs> Rachel Marie Freebert, cum laude, the Lynette Nielsen Professional Practice Award, Departmental Honors in Art and Art History, Departmental Honors in Communication and Media Studies. <laughs> Jacqueline Nyjah Elise Glenn, cum laude, Departmental Honors in English. <laughs> Michael Joseph Gutkin, cum laude, Departmental Honors in Computer Science. Elizabeth Hanakata, cum laude. Claire Ingersoll, cum laude. Mason Rhodes K, cum laude, the Anthropology Award, Departmental Honors in Anthropology. John Vincent Leslie, cum laude, the Stewart Theater Award, Departmental Honors in Theater. David Yates McSwain, cum laude. Nathan T. Radke, cum laude. Megan Teresa Rowan, cum laude. Departmental Honors in Psychology. <laughs> Rebecca Helene Schaffel, cum laude. <laughs> Natalie Rose Terrio, cum laude.
Emily Catherine Thiemann, cum laude. Brett Michael Van Hoven, cum laude, Departmental Honors in Psychology. Kevin Wilson, cum laude. My Issa El Heber. Abusin, Departmental Honors in Business Management. <laughs> Matthew Ryan Aubin. <laughs> Olivia Madison Auer. Departmental Honors in Business Management. Elizabeth Baden. Erin Patricia Beach. William Arthur Benson III. <laughs> Amelia Lynn Burback. <laughs> Elizabeth Ann Beaner. Taylor Lorraine Blades. Amanda Whitney Bland. Scott Lee Blumberg. Nathan Bonsib. Dylan Wayne Bowden. Nicholas William Boyles. Timothy Bowman Bricken. Brianna Michelle Bricker. Mary Margaret Conselmo. Heather Lynn Carroll, Departmental Honors in Psychology. Rose Catherine Cesaro. Sophie Sawyer Chilton. Samantha Ray Clark.
Amanda Lynn Clem. Leslie Danielle Collins. Terry E. Conrad, Jr. Caitlin Elizabeth Corbin. Rebecca Elizabeth Costello. Connor James Cotting. <laughs> Catherine Mowry Crook, the Non Traditional Student Award. James Crowley. Andrew Darlington. Olivia Rose Diaz. The American Studies Program Senior Capstone Experience Award, Departmental Honors in American Studies. Mark Thomas Deese. May Wen Do. Cecily Lynn Doctor. Yeah. Taylor Nicole Douglas, the, Depar the Education Department Award, Departmental Honors in Psychology. Yeah. Jason Glenn Elder. Molly Caitlin Fisher. <laughs> Benjamin Timothy Pfizer, Departmental Honors in Business Management. Patrick Thomas Gallagher. Aaron M. Geshwilm. Alexander Gurnius. Noah Gonzalez. Zachary Garassi. Tia Marie Gracie in absentia. Brian Patrick Graham. Alicia Marie Green. Yeah. 
Joseph Casey Greaves. Mariam A. Halim. Cole Handy. Matthew Mallon Harmon. Anne Alexis Hera. Lakin Harrigan, the Maureen Jacoby Prize, Departmental Honors in English. Reagan Renee Harville. Ronnie Layton Hastings III. Colin Higgins. Gavin Hobde O'Donnell. Mitchell Hochstein. Andrew Trainer Hoffner, the Holstein Prize for Ethics, Departmental Honors in Business Management. Emily Holt. Departmental Honors in English. <laughs> Joseph Xavier Hood. <laughs> Andrew John Huntertmark the Fourth. Mia Jackson. <laughs> Patrick James Jackson, the Phi Alpha Theta Award, Departmental Honors in History. <laughs> Tiffany Monet Jackson. Jameson Edith Elizabeth Jensen. <laughs> Jun Young Yang Jin in absentia. Kayla Elizabeth Johns. <laughs> Julia L. Kesmarzik, the American Studies Program Senior Capstone Experience Award, Departmental Honors in American Studies. <laughs> Fatimata Kane. <laughs> Olivia Karanian.
Brian Marshall Casey, in absentia. Christian Lawson Keller. Cole Frederick Kemmerer. Kyle Carwin. Hennings J. Shota. M. Seth Klein. Jillian Catherine Crowell. Julia Marie Lotto. Senyuan Lin. Jiahan Lyle. Isaiah H. Lloyd. <laughs> Melissa Sue Lopez Neely. Danielle. Marie Lynch. Chuda Lu. Yuying Lu. Janae Murano, the W. Dennis Berry Aider Class of 87 Leadership Award, Departmental Honors in Business Management. <laughs> Charles Joseph Marchesani. Patricia Getz Markey. Brennan Anderson Martz. Julia Grace Maslin. Theodore Henry Mathis III. Paloma Mato Rivero in absentia. Anna Elizabeth Mays, Department of Music Award for Professional Promise in Research and Creative Achievement. Brian Patrick McCluskey. Kevin Andrew McCormick. Megan Ellie McPherson.
Michael K. Mensa. Carson Marlo Metzger. <laughs> Sheng Mi. <laughs> Xin Miao. Savannah Joe Midkiff, Departmental Honors in Sociology. Savannah Alexandra Miller. Shannon Lynn Moran, Departmental Honors in English. Connor Timothy Morgan. Madison Rose Morton. David Christopher Mulhorn. Lauren Elizabeth Neary. Jack Taylor Nevins. Emma J. O'Donnell. Caitlin O'Donnell. <laughs> Mallory Brooke O'Mara. <laughs> Brady J. O'Neill, Departmental Honors in Business Management. Ao Chen Yang. <laughs> Selena C. Palomique. <laughs> Allison Claire Pantazes. <clears throat> Emily Marie Pantazes, <clears throat> Caitlin Marie Peacock, the Karen Cates Emick Award, Award Departmental Honors in Theater. Veronica Pedden, Departmental Honors in Psychology, in Absentia. Austin David Allen Perry. Grace Peters. J. 
Joshua D. Peterson. Cameron R. Pottinger. Shannon Preen. Matthew John Ranny. Theoni Rappo, Departmental Honors in Business Management. Isabella Grace Richardson. Ryan Joseph Rissi. Amy Erica Rudolph. Spencer David Russell. Christopher Salisbury. Bertie San Martin. Haley Della Sanchez. Jake Sandler. Aaron Isabel Sauter. Kevin Sawyer. Aziz Sebeh. Helene Marcelite Schlitt in absentia. Anna Claire Schmidl. Nicole Schroyer. Daniel A. Schweitzer. Sarah Jane Seckler in absentia. Isabel Sella. Emma M. Sims. Sarah Slimani. Yusra Slimani. Emma Kathleen Smith. Jonathan Willis Stevenson.
Mara Tirana, the Daniel L. Primo Award. Mariah Abigail Thomas. Kevin Trapp. Sarah Nicole Underwood. <laughs> Ashley Elizabeth Waldman. Charles Andrew Walker. Aaron Wallace Holland. Jennifer Walls, the Rachel Schultz Leadership Award. Andrew Amon Walters. Kendall Leanne Walton. <laughs> Chenlin Wang. <laughs> Anna Nicole Watts. Alexandra Kaylee Marie Weiss. <laughs> Eric Paul Whitcomb. Jillian White. <laughs> Richard Albert Wicklin III. <laughs> Bailey Ann Willems. Rachel Marie Williams. <laughs> Garrett Brandon Whistle. <laughs> Jasmine F. Williston. Yuen Ling Wu. <laughs> Jacob Nathaniel Yaloff. <laughs> Karen Corinthia Maxine York in absentia. Alice Rebecca Zell. <laughs> Zhao Hong Ji. <laughs> Chen 
Chu, in absentia. Victoria Ashley Zeminski. Will the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science please come forward? <clears throat> Rose Z. Adlisi, summa cum laude, the Department of Biology Research Award, the Environmental Science and Studies Award, Departmental Honors in Biology, Departmental Honors in Environmental Science. <clears throat> Rachel. Danielle Bailey, summa cum laude. The Department of Biology Award of Special Recognition, Departmental Honors in Biology. <clears throat> Amanda Lee Gabriel, summa cum laude. Departmental Honors in Biology. Ariana Rose Sabatino, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors in Biology. Joshua David Samuels, summa cum laude, the Department of Biology Award of Special Recognition, the Psychology Department Capstone Experience Award, Departmental Honors in Biology, Departmental Honors in Psychology. Courtney Alicia Visisco, summa cum laude. The Department of Biology Award of Special Recognition, Outstanding Community Service Recognition, Departmental Honors in Biology. Colin John Vincent, summa cum laude. The Joseph H. McLean Class of 1937 Prize. <laughs> Peekaboo Sweet French, magna cum laude, Departmental Honors in Biology, in absentia. Meredith Grace Kenton, magna cum laude. The James R. Miller Class of 1951 Award for Excellence in Chemistry. Sarah Noman, magna cum laude, Departmental Honors in Biology. <laughs> David George Pitts, Jr., magna cum laude, Departmental Honors in Biology. Adam Michael Roth, Magna cum laude. <laughs> Olivia Megan Sabatino, magna cum laude, Departmental Honors in Biology. <laughs> Justin Lee Yerke, magna cum laude. The John S. Toll Prize in Physics. <laughs> Kerrigan Lee Buck, cum laude. <laughs> Morgan Kelly Domenico, cum laude. Catherine Ann Godlip, cum laude. The Department of Environmental Science and Studies Research Potential Award. Sabrina Grace Jenkins, cum laude. The Penny J. Fall Award, Departmental Honors in Biology. Caitlin Marie Marino, cum laude. The Department of Biology Research Award. Departmental Honors in Biology. Departmental Honors in Psychology. J. 
Jesse Nguyen, cum laude, Departmental Honors in Chemistry. Morgan Christy Perry, cum laude, Departmental Honors in Biology. Larissa Michelle Prezioso, cum laude, Departmental Honors in Biology. Cole Craig Rainier, cum laude, Departmental Honors in Biology. Caden David Williams, cum laude, the Department of Biology Medical Professional Award. Nicole Kristen Williams, cum laude, the Department of Biology Nursing Professional Award. Rachel Abena Asedua Ajari. Cody Lee Bisline. Anna Sage Bolton. Mackenzie Lynn Bosak. Tyler Scott Buchanan. Casey Lynn Buck. Michael Sung Min Cho. Brendan Aldridge Demas. James Luke James Destilio. Riley Grace Ely. Valerie Jean Fisher, Departmental Honors in Biology. <coughs> Molly Joy Flowers. Girisha Shankari. Arul Ganeshan, the Tai Sung An Memorial Prize. <laughs> Dominic Michael Gian Donato. Dylan Rose Grimes, the Lynette Nielsen Juror's Choice Award. Christina S. Grovem. Lisa Mary Hamilton, the Virginia M. Connor Class of 1985 Psychology Award. <laughs> P. 
Paul Maxwell Hart. Edgardo L. Hernandez Camacho. Emma Kate Hudson. Patrick Andrew Huff. Parakram Karki. Beatrice Gawu Keller. Coy Joseph Langless. Kayla Marie Lauer. Siwan Lu in absentia. John Martin. <laughs> Devin Nicole Mall. <laughs> Carl. Otto Melchior. Michael Jeffrey Menke. Nicholas Philip Masada. Danielle Irene Murdoch, Departmental Honors in Psychology. Shiv Kamal Nanda. Trevor R. Odenath. Virginia Claire Parker. Lee Potter. Maria Cristina Rodriguez Mas. Alexis Nicole Rulo. Madison Mackenzie Schutz. Amanda Van Tran. James Douglas Turley, Jr. Xuan Wang, in absentia. Cameron Rainier Watson. (laughs) 
Allison Courtney Wilkins. Yifei Zhang. <laughs> Haley Elizabeth Zulo. At this time, I would like to ask all candidates to please stand. Is candidati alumni sunt. Will the graduates please hood one another at this time? Okay, so thank you Patrice and thank you Rick. So graduates, please be seated or faint, whichever comes first. I call upon Provost De Quinzio and Alumni Board Chair Patrick McMenamin to award the Alumni Association Distinguished Teaching Award. Dr. De Quinzio. At an institution blessed with a number of distinguished teachers, the recipient of the Alumni Association's Distinguished Teaching Award is difficult to choose. Extensive consultation with students and faculty has led to our conclusion. This year, the award is presented to Professor Cristina Casado Presa. <laughs> Professor Presa, will you join me? Christina, who joined the Washington College faculty in 2008, is Associate Professor of Spanish, Director of the Gender Studies Program, and Chair of the Department of World Languages and Cultures. We look forward to Christina delivering the keynote speech at Fall Convocation. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Dr. Prissa. So your new relationship with Washington College is just beginning. I, I encourage you to support your alma mater in every way you can. You are our new best ambassadors, not only for the college, 
but frankly, for the value of liberal arts. Please keep the torch alive through your membership in the Alumni Association. Tell us of your accomplishments and come back often to take part in the life of your college. I ask the graduates now to rise and to congratulate each other as you're welcomed formally into the ranks of Washington College alumni. One step we missed. This is the awards. These awards. Okay. We got, we got to get back to these okay. Awards. So we'll do that now. Yeah. And I'll read the actual awards. Okay. So it's now my privilege to award the highest honors and prizes that are within the Washington College's faculties power to bestow upon the members of the class of 2019. The first awards are given for outstanding scholarship. You can all be seated. Outstanding scholarship, particular field of study and recognized personal and academic excellence. Dr. DeQuinzio will make the awards. The Jane Houston Goodfellow Memorial Prize to a graduating senior majoring in science who has an abiding appreciation of the arts and humanities and has shown scholastic excellence. This year we have a tie. Picbo Sweet French in absentia and Amanda Lee Gabriel. the Gold Pentagon Awards to a senior and to one alumnus, faculty, or friend of the college selected by Omicron Delta Kappa Society in recognition of meritorious service to Washington College. Awarded to senior Victoria Marie Klein. The Gold Pentagon is also awarded to faculty member and alumna Michelle M. Volansky. The Sophie Kerr Prize. I'm very, very proud of our six Sophie Kerr Prize finalists. Will you please stand and be recognized? Erin M. Kane, May Wen Do, Emma C. Hoy, Charlotte Lindsay, Shannon L. Moran, Shannon M. Neal. Congratulations to each of you. And now, to the senior judge to have the best ability and promise for future fulfillment in the field of literary endeavor, Shannon Moran. Hand. 
The next five awards are voted on and conferred by the entire faculty of Washington College. These awards have special significance as the graduates receiving them have made a tremendous impact on campus life. Their names will be added to plaques in William Smith Hall, permanent reminders of their importance to Washington College. First is the Lewis L. Goldstein Class of 35 Award to a graduating senior who, in the opinion of the faculty, has demonstrated unusual interest, enthusiasm, and potential in the field of public affairs. Awarded to Kelly Marr Gardner. The Eugene B. Casey Medal to a senior woman voted by the faculty to be outstanding in the qualities of scholarship, character, leadership, and campus citizenship. Awarded to Julia Marie Portman. The Henry W. C. Catlin 1894 Medal to a senior man voted by the faculty to be outstanding in the qualities of scholarship, character, leadership, and campus citizenship. Awarded to Kyle Sharpless Pitts. the Clark Porter Medal to the student whose character and personal integrity in the opinion of the faculty has most clearly enhanced the qualities of camp the quality of campus life presented by Charles B Clark class of 34 in memory of Harry B Porter class of 1905 awarded to Rose Adelizi the George Washington Medal and Award to the senior who shows the greatest promise of understanding and realizing in life and work the ideals of a liberal education. Awarded to Kelsey Nicole McNall. Congratulations to all our award winners and to every member of the class of 2019. Congratulations again to all the graduates. I invite everyone to Martha Washington Square for reception immediately following the ceremony. Will the audience please remain standing? Please stand following the benediction by Rabbi Hyman 
and remain standing for the academic recession as we retire. Thank you very much for being here today and congratulations to all of you. Rabbi. What a moment, congratulations. And now as this inspirational, uplifting, and joyous ceremony comes to conclusion, we end with these sacred words. May God bless you and keep you. May God deal kindly and graciously with you. May God bestow favor, fulfillment, and success upon you. And may God grant you God's most precious blessing, the blessing of contentment of soul and peace, now and always. And to that prayer we say, Amen. Congratulations.